Hell yeah, man. I saw that uh, Shotzi is now in a money in a bank match. Like I said, man, all of my past posts that I, that I made about her, I knew it was all about patience. I knew her time was going to come. All these nerds and dorks who take wrestling to them seriously were saying, oh, she's going to be released. All because she was jobbing out and putting over people. I'm like, bro, that's that's pro wrestling. It's like, bro, if you don't want to lose, you shouldn't be in the business. You can't be in the business. Let me tell you, let me tell you a short story about Kurt Angle. Like uh, back in 1996, they wanted to sign Kurt Angle. The WWF wanted to sign Kurt Angle. But the reason they turned him down is because he said that he didn't want to lose. So guess what? They said, all right, bye. That's what they said, bro. You got to lose. That's what wrestling is all about. You win some, you lose some. Drew McIntyre used to be a jobber. Now he's a star now. It's like, bro, you got to take your lumps. You got to pay your dues. Nobody nobody starts out at the top. Not even Kurt Angle. But I'm glad that Shotzi is now getting a shot. I love it. I was patient. I didn't give I did not give up on her. Now, her ass is going to be in her first ever pay-per-view match. That's some good stuff. Now, you saw you saw my boy uh, Gunther. The, the ring general. Yeah, boy, you saw him um, crush that dude Ricochet. Once, once again, he crushed him. Like I said, it was best for business for the ring general to be the IC champion. That dude should hold that title for at least a year. Bring prestige back to that title. And I hate people who say, oh, he has no opponents. Well, um, wake up, Einstein. By your logic, freaking Ricochet had no dead opponents. So who cares? It's like, no, there there is opponents. There is no more brand split. So Gunther has opponents, right? If Matt Riddle wants to come over to SmackDown, he, he can come over to SmackDown if he wants to. If Chad Gable wants to come, he can come now. There's no more brand split. If Rey Mysterio wants, wants to challenge Gunther, he can come now. He has opponents, you dumbass. But that guy is one of the best things about SmackDown. Now, let's get to my boy, Butch. Good old Butch, man. Good old, good old Butchie. That dude is my favorite wrestler on SmackDown. It's not even close. He rejuvenated the career of Sheamus. Sheamus was freaking floundering. Even with Ridge Holland. Those two were kind of... Nobody, nobody cared about them. They were floundering. Then, once they got Butch into the act... Now they are starting to main event SmackDowns now. You get what I'm saying now? Ridge, Ridge and um, Sheamus, they were not main events in SmackDowns. They were not. Once Butch came to the picture, that's when they started main event SmackDowns. Now you see what I'm getting at. Butch is that whole act. Butch is a star. He's a star of that whole act. He gives them charisma. He gives them character. He makes them freaking entertaining. Now, all these nerds, all these black and gold nerds, right, from the past over saying, oh, Butch, his his character is cringe. His character is dumb. Blah, blah, blah. Well, my bro, you were the same people. Now, look, let me um bury the anti-smarks that, that freaking deny that they are anti-smarks. The same anti-smarts that are hating on the Butch character were the same people that didn't like him when he was in freaking NXT. Whatever his name was. What, his, I think his name was Pete Rose or something. Pete, Pete Smith. Something like that. But when he was in NXT, the same anti-smart marks did not like Pete Dunn. Uh, what his name is? What, Pete Rose or something like, something like that? They didn't like Pete Rose. 
because they feel like, oh, he's so serious. He can't talk. All he does is wrestle good. All he is is a freaking rook right guy. He has no character. He has no charisma. Blah, 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 blah. Now he's on a main roster with a character that Vince McMahon gave him and Bruce. They are trying to give him some charisma, give him a character, give him something that the fans can get behind. And now we are behind him now. And now I'm hearing these fake wannabe freaking anti-smarts that deny that they are anti-smarts, but you are. Because that's the definition of hypocrisy. How can you hate on Butch? And you didn't like him in freaking NXT because you think he had no character. So make up your damn mind. He has a character now. I don't care what it is. It's a damn character. Literally, it's a character. Somebody can emulate Butch. Nobody can emulate Pete Rose. Nobody can. Because we didn't know what he was. The freaking Bruiserway. What the hell is a Bruiserway? Right? Now we know what he is. And now he's Butch. He's a guy, he's a rabbit, he's a rabbit with rain. He's unhinged. He's he's crazy. He always wants to fight everybody. He's like a dog, he's a damn pit bull. That's his character. He's a guy who thinks he's bigger than what his size is. To me, that sounds like Crash Holly. A guy who was mega over with the audience. Look, man, let me tell you a secret about Crash Holly. Crash Holly was like my top 10 favorite wrestler during the add to era. Why? Because he was charismatic and he had a character. And he didn't take himself too seriously. And he had an act. He was the same guy that rejuvenated the career of Hardcore Holly. He made Hardcore Holly entertaining. You see all these segments with the 24-7 championship? Bruh, all that was Crash Holly. All that, what you see with, with the 24 7 championship, they copied all that from Crash Holly when he was a hardcore champion. Where he said that he was a 24 7 champion. That's what he said. He said that he was willing to defend the title 24 7. That's why everybody was trying to pin him back in the day. It was one of the best segments on Raw and SmackDown. He was an entertaining guy that the kids loved. I love Crash Holly. Crash Holly was a guy that the kids loved. I was like a young kid, but man, I loved Crash Holly. He was freaking entertaining. He relates to kids because he's a, he's a small guy that thinks he's bigger than what his size is. Crash Holly, when he used to come out, the ring announcer always says, he, he always said, coming in at 400 pounds, Crash Holly. Because he called himself a super heavyweight. That was a character. This dude used to come down with a damn weight scale. <laughs> to uh, prove to people that he was a super heavyweight. Dude, he was a funny guy. I Man, I was hurt when he left for uh, TNA. I Man, I, man, I was hurt. Now, if you notice, once Crash Holly left for TNA, dude, Hawker Holly was done. Hawker Holly, he literally became a jobber. Hawker Holly became a jobber once Crash Holly left. Because what was Hawker Holly known for? Like after that, he went from Raw to SmackDown all the way to Sunday Night Heat. Once Crash Holly left the act. This is what Butch is doing for Sheamus. Dude, Sheamus was born. Sheamus was floundering without Butch. Now, Sheamus is back in the main events against the Usos, against the damn New Day. They are main eventing shows because of Butch. Nobody cared about Ridge and Sheamus until Butch came to the act. That's facts. That's factual evidence. They were never main eventing no damn SmackDown together before Butch arrived. Literally, look it up. Now, Butch said he's a fan of his current character. Why? Because he said that he's been inside the WWE for the past six years and he's been the same guy. He said that it was time for him to change. It was time for him to evolve once they got to the main roster. Like, you can't be the same guy for the past six years and thinking you were going to be that same guy on the main roster. So, he was all for changing. 
Um, what's the problem with that? How can you be a fan of him, right? And you want him to be what he was down in NXT to the main roster? Dog, if he was the same guy from NXT to the, to the main roster, dog, he would have been buried. He would have been released. <laughs> he would have been buried. He would have been jobbing. Okay? There's no way in hell Vince McMahon would have got behind him. Hell no. There's no way. He had no character. He was serious. He couldn't really talk all that well. You think he was going to be a star on the main roster as Pete Rose, <laughs> whatever his uh, name was? You, you think that was going to get over? No way in hell. He would have been worse than freaking Ricochet. Once again, what if Ricochet would have took the, the initiative on changing his character? Kind of like Butch did. Maybe freaking Ricochet wouldn't be where he's at now. Maybe he'll be higher on the car if he would have changed up his character. Butch was a boring guy down in NXT. He was boring as hell. Now, he's in the main event scene now, bro. He's involved in main events. Whether he's in it or he's a part of it somehow, he's now in the main events on SmackDown. As a tag along or he's in the match wrestling against Drew McIntyre or the New Day. Am I wrong here? Nope. Those are factual evidence. It was smart that he said that, look, man, I got to change. I can't be the same guy on the main roster. I got to change. And that's what he did. He's smart. He he did what I said everybody should do down in freaking NXT. Dog, whatever works down in NXT, that's not going to work on the main roster. What part of that don't you understand? Right? Freaking Ricochet, he was cocky. Ricochet was cocky, man. He thought, hey, I'm over down in the black and gold brand. So, because I'm doing flips and kicks and dives that please that audience. Okay, once I get to Raw Smackdown, I'm going to be the same guy. And I'm going to be the next AJ Style. Man, hell no. Hell no. Look where he's at now. Right? Look where he's at now. He had a boring IEC title reign. You can make the argument he had the worst IEC title reign in the history of that belt. Why? He never defended it on a pay-per-view. So that's my proof that he might be the worst IEC champion of all time. How can you be an IC champion and you never defended it at WrestleMania? No other pay-per-views? That's crazy. That's insane. That's wild. But let's get back to Butch. Dude, Butch reminds me of Crash Holly. When it comes to, um, I think they're called the Brawling Brutes. Sheamus, he's Hawk or Holly. And Reg Holly, he's Molly Holly. But the guy that makes that faction go is Butch and Crash Holly. You see where I'm getting at now? Without without Butch and Crash Holly, that's a boring ass group without them. See, it's Butch, he did everything I said. He did everything I said. Whatever you do down in NXT, bro, that's not going to get over on the main roster. And he realized that. You know who he looks up to? His 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 inspirations were Wim Regal and Dave Bryan. Now, the Wim Regal that he's talking about was the comedy act, Wim Regal. The one that was the commissioner, the one that was with Tajiri, the one that Chris Jericho actually peed inside of his uh, coffee cup. That, that Wim Regal. He was funny as hell. He was a great comedy act. That's who Butch looks up to. A guy that was the guy that was from the UK. That once he got to the main roster, he was put in freaking comedy segments to show some more personality. That's what this is all about. Butch is now showing some personality. That's what Vince Man wanted out of Wim Regal. That's why he made him the man's man during his first run. 
Then he came back. He made him the commissioner. And he showed tons of funny personality. He had great comedic timing, right? With him and Jericho and Tajiri. That was great stuff. Now, he also likes Daniel Bryan. Now, what he means by Daniel Bryan was he, he means team hell no. That Daniel Bryan, that was a that was a comedy act with Kane. So those were the guys that gave him the influence on changing up his character on being more of a of a comedy act to get more over. And it's working. You see, when you show more personality, you get rewarded for it. Butch is now being rewarded for showing some personality now. Right? Like, Team Hell No, that was a funny-ass tag team. So, you can see the combination of William Regal and, and the Team Hell No, Daniel Bryan, with Butch. Butch is a funny-ass dude, man. He's the best thing on SmackDown. Also, uh... There was a there was another guy that was a comedy act. Who else? Uh, Fit Philly, Fit Philly with Hornswoggle. Now, Fit Philly when he was in WCW, he was a serious badass dude, right? He was serious. He told no he told no jokes. He took himself very seriously. But once he got to the WWF, and he was paired up with uh, Hornswoggle, that's when Fit Philly got over. That's how Hornswoggle got over, right? Remember that? Dude, when you say that it ain't fit fairly inside of the WWE, who do you think about? The first person I think about is Hornswoggle. <laughs> I don't know about you. Hornswoggle. Let, let that sink in. Once Fit Fairly became a comedy act, that's how he got over. That's how we mostly remember him now. Now, Fit Philly is another guy from the UK, just like Pete Rose, that took it upon himself to become a comedy act, to show some more personality. And it it worked. Now it's working for Butch now. You see what happens when we show some personality? See? So you have Wim Regal, Fit Philly. Two famous guys from the UK who were known as badasses, who were serious guys down in WCW. But once they got to the main roster on Raw and SmackDown, they said, you know what, man, we got to change. We got to show some more personality. We can't be bland as a damn chalkboard. And they got rewarded for it, didn't they? They became champions, right? That's what I mean. Now, when it comes to Butch, look, I'm telling you, man, he reminds me of Crash Holly. Crash Holly and Spike Dudley. That's why the kids like him. And that's why the kids will like him. Because, dude, I'm going to say it again. I loved Crash Holly when I was a kid, man. He was funny as hell, man. I was a huge Crash Holly fanboy. Still to this, still to this day, I am, man. Still to this day, man. I miss Crash Holly. Man. I miss good old Air Roy, man. Elroy, he was over, man. That's who he reminded me of, Crash Holly. Butch. Look, man, Butch has tons of potential. Like I said, I see Ridge and Butch, uh, I see them most likely become a tag team champions down the road. I don't know when. Most likely, the crowd will turn them into faces, eventually. You, you, you have seen how uh, Sheamus teamed up with uh, Drew McIntyre. See, those are seeds that are planted that eventually the Brawling Brutes will become faces down the line. And they will beat the Usos for those tag team titles. I don't care what anybody say. They will be tag team champions. Butch and Ridge Holland. I'm telling you, man, this has rejuvenated the career of uh, Sheamus. Being paired up with Butch. Like I said, Butch is the most entertaining guy on the show. And I'm glad... Pete Rose or Pete Dunn or Pete Smith said that um, he is a fan of his character on the main roster. He said that because, like, okay, even when he was NXT, 
he had some comedy segments. People forget that. Uh, he was tag team champions with um, Matt Riddle. They were a comedy act. So those were seeds planted that Pete loves being a, a guy that's about comedy. He likes showing off his funny side. Hence why he's paired up with Matt Riddle. They were a comedy tag team. One guy was serious and one guy was a, was a damn goofball, right? So Pete Rose always was a fan of showing off his comedy side. So that's why it's crazy that people have a problem with the Bush character. Like, why? Like, like, why? like huh? Dog, he has a character now. He's He ain't known for a guy who just breaks fingers. Now he has a character, a gimmick. A guy you, you can freaking emulate. Literally. Like I said, man, Butch is the best thing on SmackDown. And I'm glad he took the initiative on changing his character and giving himself a gimmick. Okay, I'm, I'm done.